Joining us now is Thomas Petterfee, founder and chairman at Interactive Brokers. Thomas, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you very much for having me. I do want to start there more broadly and just get your take on the markets, this big surge we've seen in stocks in recent days and, and uh, drop in yields alongside it as well. So the big surge in the stock prices goes hand in hand with, hand in hand with the dropping yields. So it is, it is since the Fed meeting that uh, yields went down almost 50, uh, the 10-year the yield went down 44 basis points or 43 basis points, while the stock market went up uh, 5%. Uh, so they, they, it, it, it's completely interconnected. Uh, we would think that uh, prevailing treasury rates are the result of large money flows in a very robust market. But that, unfortunately, is not the case. Long-term treasuries are, to an ever greater extent, financed in the short-term repo markets. And their prices are determined by the treasury futures markets. Mm -hmm. And futures are very highly leveraged at about 100 to 1. So all in all, we have a potentially very volatile situation where highly leveraged treasury futures are driving the long-term treasury markets on the one hand, and they are also driving the S&P 500 and QQ futures on the other. Mm. And the stock follow, stocks follow the S&Ps and QQs. Uh, so it is, a, it is a very, very large leverage use, is used and these connections are, are kind of flimsy because there is not a lot of money on there behind all this. So okay. it's, it is kind of worrisome so, to me, at least. Interesting. So, so what I'm curious about is what this means, uh, the volatility we're seeing in the bond market, higher rates from the Fed um, in general, what this means for interactive brokers, especially since you do really compete hard on things like margin loan rates, um, and also what it means for your clients and their investing behavior and whether the risk-reward uh, dynamic or equation for them ha has shifted in terms of where they're putting money to work. So our clients are very well aware of the flimsy nature of these connections because we have many of our clients are, are basically professionals. So they are taking a hands-off attitude uh, in preparation of a coming potentially explosive volatility. Uh, and while that is happening, many of our professional trader customers are in the short-term options using mostly vertical spreads to reduce cost. So they, they may take, a, they, they usually are on the QQs or the, or the SPY options, and they make a, may take a position where they uh, go along uh, uh, 430 call and uh, go short uh, uh, 432 call. Uh, so if, 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 if the market goes up to 432, they, they make the, the 20, uh, the $200. Okay. Uh, I, do, I do have to ask uh, about the competitive landscape. We did just get earnings results from Robinhood. Revenue missed uh, estimates as we've seen muted trading volumes continue to weigh on that particular business. I realize it's not necessarily apples to apples comparison um, with interactive brokers, but how does it speak to what we're seeing uh, across platforms right now where retail traders are concerned and where trading activity in this volatile environment is concerned? Well, to tell you frankly, I never quite understood Robin Hood's uh, business proposition because they have 10 million customers or 11 million customers and and they keep reporting losses we have uh, interactive brokers has two and a half million customers and we have about three billion dollars of profits a year so i <laughs> i just don't see that i don't understand 